everyone, it's Johnny from Woodworking with Five Tools. Today I'm gonna show you how to get from this to this. So before we start, we're gonna take a look at the materials that we need. Pretty easy, normal wood beam. I'm going for oak here. It's like 300 years old uh, wood beam out of a, um, it was a house from 1700, something like this. So it's pretty rare wood that I'm using here. You can also take pine or whatever you have laying around. Um, then we need the LED lightning. We need a power supply for the LED lightning, normal screws, circle template. We will get to this later. And we're building a sled for flattening this um, beautiful wood beam that we have here. And for that we need some, I'm using MDF, you can take any material that you have laying around. And now we can take a look at the, um, at the machines that we need and the tools. And I thought I'm gonna make a short um, challenge today because all these tools that we have here, they're like, most of them are pretty expensive. So when you're at home and you're like building in your garage, you might have not that much money to buy all these tools because they cost 3,218 euro. I just uh, did some research yesterday and found out that this is, uh, these are the current prices. So I thought maybe I should like show you how to do it with uh, cheaper tools. So what I'm doing now, I'm changing all the tools that we here have and I'm gonna spend, instead of 3,280, I'm gonna spend 348. And I'm gonna make this project with only the cheap tools. So 90% of the time I'm using only these cheap tools and you will see that we get, get exactly the same result as you would do it with all these expensive tools. And I'm gonna show you what these cheap tools look like. So first of all, we change the chainsaw to a much cheaper electric chainsaw. Secondly, we change the fast tool sander, which is a really good sander, but we change it for this project to a normal angle grinder for 65 euro. I'm changing this brush machine <laughs> to a normal drill, which I got for free. <laughs> I didn't spend any money on this. And I'm changing my router to a much cheaper one and I'm changing this circular saw to a much cheaper circular saw. So as you can see, I mean you can spend 348 euro on these tools and get a perfect result. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's start. The first step of our build is the brushing process. So I brought you three different stages and you can choose um, what you want for your working piece because these stages each will take some time and some effort. So the first stage is completely rough. You have your wood beam, it's completely rough. The second stage is already with the brush grinder um, sanded in every direction twice with the metal thing and with the, I guess it's nylon, it's called nylon, nylon brush. And the third stage is um, already oiled, brush grinded, if you want to call it like this, and sand it on the top. So these are the three stages and with the timestamps you can just skip if you want only this stage or if you want to move this stage, um, you can completely uh, choose out of it. Um, because it's your working piece and you have to decide. Um, you need to, when you're like uh, using this brush grinder or when you're using your drill, which is a lot cheaper, it is important to do this in this direction. So in the direction of the wood fiber. So never do it like this. And what is also important, you have to do it twice. You have to do it in every like direction once. Once in this direction and once in this direction because there are some wood fibers standing up here and standing up here. So you need to take all of them away. When you're just brushing in one direction, you're taking these away, but these will stand up still. So you want to take all of them. 
and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's go. For the brushing process, um, I'm gonna take first the metal brush, then I take the nylon brush, and I'm just showing you like that you see how to, how to do it in like this section. And the whole would be would take too long, but I'm gonna show it to you how to do it. Alrighty. You can wear a mask. Normally I would highly recommend to do it outside, but we have like snow in Dresden and we don't wanna get all the equipment outside. So I'm doing it inside. Normally you have also, um, I also have something like this to um, attach the vacuum cleaner to the brush machine, if you wanna call it like this. This is also possible inside. Now I'm doing like only 10 seconds inside, but I would highly recommend to do it, to do it outside. So as we finished the brushing process, we now need to make a cut with the chainsaw. So I'm going for 15 centimeters because I want my end working piece in 15 centimeters. So what I'm doing, I'm taking this square and I'm just like doing 15 centimeters. And I'm doing this all around the wood beam. So that when we use our chainsaw, we can be as precise as possible. For the next step, we need to flattening our wood beam. So for that, I'm doing a little template. I'm doing, uh, I'm building myself a little box out of these MDF boards. And we only need the circular saw in this build if you don't already cut your MDF boards. So normally I just buy them just uh, in this size that I showed you before. And I don't need the circular saw now. But if you don't have like all the sizes available, then you might need a circular saw to just cut it into pieces. So now I'm just taking normal screws and screw the little box together. Okay. So our box is built. Now I have this MDF board, which you can see the size. I have a 23 centimeters um, height because uh, the wood beam that I have is nearly the same height. So it's a little bit more than this wood beam. So what I'm now doing, I have a hole in the middle and I'm putting my wood beam on this board. And if this wood beam is like not stable um, we can take some spaces I guess you call them spaces you can just put underneath some spacers when you're doing everything right yeah perfectly stable so what I'm doing I'm taking my MDF board on here I'm taking a clamp And I just clamp it down. Perfect. Now I'm turning everything around. Careful. When you're lucky, you haven't, you can still see your hole. I'm taking the box. So I'm making on the right and on the left and on the right and make some small marks. And now I know where I need to put uh, drill some holes 
just to screw the box on this MDF board where the, where the beam is uh, screwed down. So we're finished with uh, building our box. So now we need to um, build the sled itself. We need to make a hole right in the middle for our router and our router bit. So I'm gonna do this with a little force drill bit. Alrighty, so finished with this, right in the middle is a hole for our router. We're taking our router and every router has this little plastic board, whatever you want to call it, um, underneath it. So I'm gonna like loosen the screws and take this little plastic board and I'm gonna make some holes in my sled. So, perfect. So, now I'm taking this board. I leave this one here. And I just take a pencil and mark where I want to drill the holes that will, where I can screw down the router. So, please make sure uh, that you use a drill bit like this, that all the screws that you're gonna need for mounting your uh, router, that they will sink into your board. So when you're sliding your sled on the box, there is no screw um, stopping you from sliding. So, now I can take my router, and I'm just putting it on here. And I take this, and when everything went right, I can take these four screws that I that are from the plastic board, from this rather plastic board, and I can take these screws and Mount it down. Perfect. So as you can see, this is our sled. So there's only one thing that we need to, uh, to think about is that our uh, sled that we just built is not bending because it's only seven millimeters You can see that this is like a bending a little bit and we don't we want a level surface So we're securing our sled with just a simple wood sled So I'm gonna clamp this down here I made some holes as you can see one two three four five holes I put this sled on Clamp it down and put some screws in from underneath and this will keep the sled stable that is not bending when we're flattening our uh, wood beam. Now we're finished with building this sled and I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I have a 3 cm in diameter router bit that I have in here. I bought a cheap one so this cost like around 8 to 10 euro. It's not pretty good quality, but the thing is that all these wood beams that we have here, they're sometimes dirty, they sometimes even have nails in there. So if I'm like, if I'm taking a 50 bucks around a bit and just uh, screw it up, I think that's not worth the money. So I'm taking a cheap router bit and using it only a couple times. And yeah, that's it. I think we can start now. So before we start with our flattening process, we have to pay attention to some uh, little things. So the first thing is you only should take one millimeter away per path. So we're doing like multiple paths, maybe two or three or four, 
Um, and only take one millimeter away because when you're taking more away, there's an opportunity that uh, your router breaks down or you will get hurt. So for safety reasons, I was o I would always recommend to take only one millimeter away. And I'm just clamping my box that I just made. I'm clamping it down. So for safety reason, as I said, there's one thing that you also have to pay attention to. Never start your router when you're setting your depth on your wood beam. Always start it where is no wood. This is really important because when you're starting a router and you have it in here, it will break down and it will screw up your working piece. Okay, let's start. So we're finished with our first side. I think pretty good result. So what we're doing, we're turning the whole box around. Perfect. Take the side that we just made. Put a piece at the end, right in the middle, clamp it down. Clamp it down again. When you don't have enough space between your box and your router bit, this is possible because your router bit comes out of your sled only maybe one centimeter or one and a half centimeter. Um, you can just take some of these spacers, even thicker, or take two of them and lose the screw again and, and put them underneath. Uh, the side that you just uh, already fed. For the sanding process, normally I would take this Rotex, as I mentioned, but we want to make like a cheap build with cheap tools. So I'm taking this angle grinder, angle grinder. And um, I want to get rid of these marks that the router left, the router bit left. So I'm doing as long as these marks disappear and then we're finished. So maybe I'm doing one or two paths more, but I think this is like for this cheap tool, a pretty good result. We are at the last stage of our build, so we are almost done. The last stage is that we are putting a hole right in the middle where we can put our LED line in. So what are we going to do? I have these templates which you can buy on eBay or in the internet like 10 or 20 bucks. Um, they have all circles in there and they have different diameters. So I'm measuring the LED that I have that I want to put in. And I'm measuring at first the inside, something around 5.5 centimeters. And the outside is um, 6.4. So I'm gonna make a hole which is around 6 centimeters. And then it will perfectly fit. So what I'm gonna do, I have this copy ring for my router. I put this copy ring in. And this copy ring is 3 centimeters in diameter. So I'm putting this in. The router bit that I have in here is 2 centimeters in diameter. So there's always 1 centimeter less that is like getting taken away than the copy ring. This is a circle from 7 centimeters and this will make a hole with this copy ring and this router which is 6 centimeters. And if you're wondering how do I get this like this circle 
clamped down. I love to take double-sided tape. It's that easy. Put the router on and look at that. So this is like zero. The last measurement from the depth of my LED lightning. It's like 1.10. The thing is that nobody will see if we go a little bit deeper. So what I like to do with like these LED lighting, I'm going a little bit deeper because sometimes they have screws in here or whatever. So I'm going for one and a half centimeter. Um, so I can like, put the cable in there and anything. So I'm putting the router down. I'm going for one and a half centimeter down. And then I will also do multiple paths because I have a two centimeter router and I'm doing it like maybe this one and a half centimeters in depth. I'm doing it maybe in one or two, maybe three paths. Um, because one path would be too much for this router and this router bit. Yeah, I think that's it. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the router bit that we have in here. Because of this router that we have in here with a cutting edge, we can dive into our working piece. So I would always, I would always recommend to buy router bits with a cutting edge because it's a lot easier when you can dive into your, your, your would be. So here we are a couple days later, sorry to say, but our microphone said goodbye, so um, we could just show you the material. Um, I drilled a hole with this 8mm drill bit, it's a little bit longer that you're getting through all the wood beam. And after that, you need to get the cable from your LED lightning through this wood beam. So it's pretty easy and not complicated. And now I want to show you the result because in the material or in the, in the shots that we made back then you can see me like after the project and look how proud I am in these pictures and these materials and I also wanted to show you how simple it is to make art because with this little plastic bottle that we um, put on this LED lightning I think it still looks beautiful and it's uh, still a great project even when you don't have these wine balloons you can take whatever you have laying around. And now I wanted to show you how everything came together because I've sanded the edges a little bit and I've oiled the top and you can see how beautiful this looks. I mean this is amazing. Just how the colors are popping out and this 300 years old oak. It's just amazing. So, and I made a second one because I want two of them just in terms of style. <laughs> And you can put some wine balloons on there. And connect them with your power. And here we are. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Yeah, I think that's it for the build today. I hope that you had fun. I hope that you maybe have such a great, such a great result as we have here. And I hope you like what we're doing. Um, we will see you next time on the next build. We have great builds coming up. I'm really looking forward uh, to some of them. And yeah, I think that's it. And as always, keep on woodworking. See you next time. Bye bye.